All of which brings us to our talk of the tape. Can a clean breakout follow this week's brief shakeout? And are the markets correct in shrugging off that uptick in CPI and softer retail sales numbers this morning ahead of a PPI reading tomorrow? Let's ask Rick Reeder. He is head of BlackRock's global allocation team and chief investment officer of global fixed income there. Rick, great to see you. Good to, have, good to be here. Thanks for having me. So there you start with, uh, you know, I think there was a lot of comfort that we had a pretty solid economy and, um, you know, the, the central banks were in a good place because they could be patient. The economy didn't need too much help and inflation was going the right way. Anything interrupt that view at all this week? Yeah, I mean, listen, you have to respect. I mean, when that CPI number printed, it, it wasn't. The headline was a little scary in terms of where it was relative to the trend you described. When you dug, dug into it, though, there are a couple of things you need to, to respect. One is service level inflation. When you go down the list, insurance, medical services, education, it's pretty firm. You know, the Federal Reserve has a hard time bringing down that level of inflation. By the way, those aren't areas that are re really interest rate sensitive for the most part. So we have sticky service level inflation. However, the markets took that as, oh, my God, inflation's going the other way. You've actually dug in. There was a quirk around owner's equivalent rent. Yep. That my sense is going to, you're going to see that start to balance out over the next couple of months. So, listen, I think you have to respect that inflation. The Fed can be a bit more patient. Are they going to start in May or June? I think they are. I still think they're going to get 75 basis points off the funds rate this year. But, you know, think about where we were two weeks ago. <clears throat> the consensus in the market was they were going in March, which was crazy to start with. But, you know, now they can be a bit patient. But, you know, listen, I think you have to have respect for the number. We've got to watch the inflation numbers from here. But if you take the long-term trend, inflation is coming down. It's service-level inflation that may s remain sticky high for a bit. And then on the economic growth side, I mean, look, the Atlanta Fed number is a snapshot. It still looks good. It's above 2 percent real growth for the first quarter. But then you had some noise in the retail sales number today. It was right. give back right. from a strong December. Um, now, it's so hard to tease out what is genuine weakness yeah. or a new trend and what is just kind of a return to some kind of normal activity. So I'm on the I'm on we're having an outbreak of normality thesis. And, <laughs> yeah. and so so, by the way, if you think about where we've come from, if you go back to 2021, we had nominal GDP of almost 12 percent. Then we had 7 percent plus in 22. And then last year, five and a half, five plus. You know, listen, I think we're going to run four percent nominal GDP. If you go back three decades for the last three decades pre covid, that's kind of a normal rate of growth. So when you look, when you parse the numbers and you say, Retail sales a little softer. Some areas of retail is softening up a bit. But I still think you have a good economy. I think the idea that recession, deep recession, when you go through it quantitatively, you look at consumer spend, you get a 3.7% unemployment rate at 4.5% wage. Consumer is going to keep spending. Business, you look at R&D spend, we talk about AI and other things, pretty good. Government spend is still there. Economy is going to chug along. I think you'll see 1.5% to 2% real growth this year. Put some inflation on it. You got a 4%, 4 percent, 4 plus percent nominal GDP. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Historically, uh, in the range of where nominal GDP is running is where 10 year Treasury yields tend to, you know, oscillate around. So does this make sense to you where we are right now? I mean, the bond market did get a jolt on Tuesday, and maybe it was an outsized reaction because of the positioning. But, you know, you've, you've given back some of that yield pop. So I think you gave some people say, you know, where should the 10 year be? Like you say, for decades, nominal GDP was where the 10 year was. You know, there were points in time we were behind at points of time we were through it. But generally, the intermediate trajectory of it's pretty close to nominal GDP. If you take the metric that we just talked about, 10 year at about 4 percent, we are I think the 10 years found its home. If you get, you know, once you get some of the stronger inflation data, you back up a little bit. I think you're going to end the year with a 10 year three and a half to four. We'll get in the second half of the year. Fed will start cutting rates. You'll move the forwards down. I think you'll get to a place you're three and a half to four. But I don't think, you know, the trade for 2024 is not let's bet on long end interest rates 10 years and out as rallying that much. I think they're basically found their place.